What a play, play after play after play. And he's got a lot of room to run, and she is wow. taking over. Rones, that's his The greatest it. conference in the country is showing out tonight, gentlemen. I cannot believe it. That is the greatest Look at football this. game. Thank you so much for being with us on a Tuesday night. We appreciate you joining us for the WCAC Spectacular. On behalf of First Amendment Sports, I'm Ken Marangolo. He's Tim Strachan. Yeah, we might have been away on the Tuesdays, but we were we were around on some Friday nights, some Saturdays. It was been tough. It's good to see you guys back on a Tuesday night, though. He's Kevin Ricca. Yeah, we have been away on a bit of a vacation, and the man who needs to be on a vacation more so than anyone else, well, we just put him through Skype hell. So we're right back getting after it here, guys. Let's have some fun. We uh, are, are very appreciative to uh, our crew tonight, Sean and Luke. We are back together as a team and the First Amendment Sports Studios. Let's get things started the way we like to. little thing we call around the league. Brought to you by Lido. Let's start in Kensington, Maryland, where Piper Sullivan, class of 21, makes her 500th save against St. Mary's Riken. Stonewall. Piper Good Sullivan boy. will attend Towson in the fall. Best of luck to a fellow Kensingtonian. Stan, it, Holy Cross, class of 17, Emily Ryan, UCLA. Kate. Class of 20, Riley Parchment, West Point. Both participate in the first round of the NCAA Volleyball tournament, two former WCAC first teamers. I know Terrence Ryan's proud in Kensington right yeah. now. As well he should be. Speaking of a proud group of WCAC folks, how about uh, how proud all of us are of Dino Campbell. Inducted into the Maryland Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Repping Hyattsville, Maryland and the Damatha Stag Stags. But he has been doing good work all over the league for quite a, a number of years. One of a kind, man. Yeah, truly well deserved. well deserved. And, I mean, has had so much influence on so many young men. What a men. teacher, T-Bird, our guy. Staying in, in, in the league, staying in the city. How about AZ FUD just collecting more and more and more hardware? 2021 Morgan Wooten Player of the Year on her way to UConn. Hopefully uh, we'll get a chance to talk to her before she hits the road. An awesome career. Well-deserved honors. Class, class all the way. Two goats from the league. Yep. Two goats from the league. Staying with highly touted WCAC basketball players, Trevor Keels making his way down to Durham, hooking up with a former teammate at PVI, Jeremy Roach. The Keels Roach Duke duo is, thank goodness Maryland's no longer in the ACC because I <laughs> would hate to root against that. It's going to be fun to watch those two together. From the Panther stands down to the Cameron Crazies, it's not going to be much different. Speaking of keeping things the same, Aja Shepard, she's going to keep things the same for another year in Blacksburg, Friend Virginia. Senior year part two. That three-point record, gentlemen, is about to get put out there. Can't wait to talk to her about being a senior twice. Something everyone has, oh, we've all wanted to do. Who didn't want to have their senior year twice? Come on. <laughs> on unless you're Kevin Ricca. Yeah, unless you're Kevin Ricca, who wouldn't uh, want to stay in college? She, right. as we said after we interviewed her, she is a genius, just proving it yet again. <laughs> How about Chris Likes, former Gonzaga uh, player, gets another year at a new school. He's heading over to Arkansas. The pride of Purple Eagle Nation. Going to be giving it a go down in Arkansas. Look forward to seeing him play. The, he can the light love up. Razorback Nation was giving him when he made the announcement that he could just see how giddy he was, man. Oh, they know who they're getting. They're Ooh. getting a player. Speaking of players, Wes Speaks has got one. Caleb Fiok, the St. John's Class of 23, five-star recruit goalie. We look forward to seeing him in action this spring for stud. the cadets. He's a complete stud. Has been his whole career. It's following in some good footsteps. There's been some good goalies out there on Military Road. Over in, staying in the city, staying on the lacrosse field, number four, T.J. Haley. Talk about filling up stat sheets. Second in the nation in assists per, per game at 3.7. He's only got 37 on the season. Every time you watch or hear about a Georgetown game, can't help but notice what number four is up to. Four goals, 37 assists, the most unselfish man in sport. Can't wait to have him on the show. Friend and family. That's who he is. Stay, sticking with the theme of friend and family, 
good counsel alum Kyle Snyder. Qualified for the Olympics uh, or, or the Olympic trials, no surprise there. Stud wrestler from Good Counsel, uh, an absolute, um, just an amazing athlete, an amazing story. He will rep this country and he will make us proud. Youngest heavyweight Olympic champion in the history of the sport comes from right here in this conference, right in Wheaton. Now it's in Olney, the Good can't, Counsel Falcons. Can't wait That's to awesome. watch some Olympic wrestling in Tokyo, from Tokyo to Olney. Olney. There you go, buddy. There you go. Speaking of heavyweights, how about the soccer program at Bishop McNamara High School, my alma mater, taking down the DeMatha Stags. T, Cameron Elder. Seen, they must have seen the picture of your team on the Hall of Fame wall. They were inspired. And got as, inspired. That's right. By those shorts, I think. They were inspired by those old school shorts. And now Cameron Elder and Justin Langan are inspiring me and inspiring our, all of uh, our, us former Mustang soccer players. Awesome job. Beating DeMatha is a fun time for, for McNamara Soccer T. I got to play in a lot of those games, and I will be the first to admit. Didn't always come out on top. Did you beat them? Yes. Uh, but it, it, it was, those were hard-fought games. And uh, there, was, there, there was a lot of players for DeMatha and McNamara that grew up playing together. Um, now, it, you know, that was before everyone played on two or three club teams, traveled all across the country. You know, you, high school playing for your high school team was the number one Thing back, right. back, back, right. back in those days. Um, want to say a special thank you to our sponsor, Lido Pizza, mm. sponsoring around the league all year. At Lido Pizza, they are square because they don't cut corners. Get yourself some pizza on a Tuesday night. And watch around the league, First Amendment Sports. We appreciate all the good work that those guys are doing. Speaking of, I know there was a lot of doing good work in there. I, I put in about twenty stories. Yeah. And, then, and we couldn't do 20 stories. I know no. that. that. That takes up a lot of time. A lot of the math stuff got cut out. We'll see, I do want to put on, God's I sake, man. Put on we, there. Have we had enough of I this yet? I do just want to note <laughs> our, <laughs> our boy Earl Timberlake, though, also yes. from the Miami, same Miami Hurricanes uh, program, decided he's going to transfer and is going to Memphis. So. Yes. And they're beginning a good player as well. That. I think someone critiques how many Demathe guys get in onto T-Bird every get, Wednesday <laughs> morning. Tommy Ponton. Yeah, the, you, your There's check is quota. in the mail. Free French fries if I show up uh, during the day. Yeah, for a every quota. You got some, a quota to hit. Yeah. A little bit of pudding. Mix in some pudding and we'll call it a, call it a, call it a day. All right. Your guy. pudding quota is it. Yeah, no, no pudding. <laughs> you can't hit the pudding quota. Yeah. It's good for you, first of all. It tastes what? delicious. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's everything a growing boy needs. Speaking of oh, God. <laughs> getting it done, not I'd say even better than pudding is is what we're, we're talking going to talk about for the next fifteen oh, minutes, if God. that's even possible. If that's even possible. I want to welcome to the show uh, someone who's been on on our show before. He's been in the basement, and he'll be back in the basement ASAP as soon as we can all be there together safely. Obviously, um, Coach Andy Stefanelli, good counsel, head football coach, awesome job this spring. Awesome job for years representing the WCAC, um, being a, a, a mentor and a role model to young men, not just in Albany, but around the league. And, man, I'll tell you what, has it been fun to watch uh, the Good Council football program for the last five weeks. We'll get more into that. I just gave a little everybody uh, a little preview of, of, of my story, one of my stories of, of the season. And you can't tell that story without Coach Andy Stefanelli. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate you guys having me, and uh, I definitely look forward to getting back to the basement after you put me through uh, all the rigors of getting on the sky. <laughs> I definitely miss being there live. Uh, first of all, it, you you're doing great, obviously, <laughs> and it, it, we're if if it's anyone's fault, it's T's fault. He yeah. he's yep. our chief in charge of yep. Skype, uh, and he he let you down tonight. Got it. <laughs> Uh, but, but you haven't let uh, let us down or anyone down uh, for quite some time, Coach. And let's just get started where we began. We had a phone conversation about a month and a half ago. Uh, I want to say it was like a Wednesday or a Thursday afternoon. And I haven't talked to people who sounded that tired uh, in quite some time. And, and I, let's just start there with the, the job you did to get this thing going. Um, d just off the ground, and, and so many other people, obviously, but... Man, I tell you what, my hat is off to you and all, all you coaches and administrations because it, it's amazing what you guys did. 
It was it was a lot of work, and really, you hit it on the head. It was you know, not just me, certainly, uh, between the training staff, the strength staff, the athletic director, president, principal, you know, everybody involved at our school and really all the other schools in, in the league uh, and the teams that we played. Uh, it really was a you know, group effort for, uh, to get these th- these games to occur and to try to put a halfway decent uh, you know, product on the field. It was, wasn't easy, and it took a lot of, a lot of work. Well, one of the things T and I asked you on that day was, you know, what's it for? What's the what's the goal? Uh, what's the agenda? You know, um, how are you selling this, not just to everyone around you, but yourself? Uh, for all the work that, that went into it, what, what, what is this um, going to do? And if you could just talk a little bit about kind of uh, then to now, because I don't think anyone is uh, – seen the, the kind of transformation we got to see up close and in person five weeks of football you, you all those players you lost um all those uh, upperclassmen who didn't get a chance to play in the fall figuring out a way to get guys experience figuring out a way to introduce underclassmen to varsity football and you, it's just it was plain as the eye can see that i don't know that anyone has done more for a program in five weeks it was just so amazing to watch thank you well yeah i think that you know every coach you know, maybe has a different perspective than, than than we we took but for us uh you know it was hey how do we give these seniors something you know it's not going to be the same and we're very upfront with our seniors like look guys we realize you lost your fall season you lost your senior season but we're going to do everything we can to give you a good experience as best we can with what we have to offer now um but then there's also you know other guys some young uh, some guys that are juniors that they didn't get film of their junior year and so they're desperate to get film so they can get recruited uh and even a few seniors left over hoping to catch an eye uh as well and then, of course, from a program perspective, we're looking at it like, hey, we've got all these young guys and uh, we, we had graduated our whole defense in uh, 19. So we had a lot of young guys. We were still trying to evaluate and assess. So then how do we do what's right for the program to develop those guys and yet still take care of the seniors? And, and um, it was a challenge, but uh, we were very upfront with the kids and told them we're going to do our best to do all of those things. And. You know, early on, it maybe uh, didn't look like uh, we were doing a very good job of that. But uh, as it went went through, as we went through the practices, and really, I credit the kids because they bought in, and it was hard. We're going different places to practice, and we were practicing the first couple weeks on campus, but we weren't allowed to touch. We had 25 on a field, and it's awful hard to get a, get kids ready to play a football game when you can't have a real practice. Um, and they hung with it, and uh, eventually the restrictions lifted a little bit, and we were able to practice, and, and you know, eventually we got better. But uh, we took that approach that we're going to try to cover all the bases and and see how it shakes out. And uh, it was kind of ugly early, but uh, you know, I think we got them there, so that was very gratifying. How's it going, Coach? I appreciate you. I know uh, you weren't ready for that half an hour. I just want you to know I walked down the hallway. I knew I couldn't help <laughs> with any Skype details, but. Uh, I, I had to ask you this. Uh, I, I got a bit of a hard time after we called the game this week with uh, Air Raid Andy. Let me let me just go yes. ahead. Let me just let me just hear it. Let me hear what you got to say. Because after the second time I said it, I stopped and thought, I better ask him about this before I proceed. <laughs> so let me have it. <laughs> I owe you one, Rick. I owe you one. <laughs> I will get you back for that. I was not. I was not. I, that was complimentary. You know how I feel. Hey, man, you threw the ball 35 times. But listen, I'm going to skip over that. I had to take my medicine, but I, I took it briefly. More importantly, 10 seniors off the championship team that Coach Sal puts together uh, that brings home the title. 10 seniors graduate. I believe Jalen Dotson comes back. And what, I love that he did this, this, this spring. Very proud of the young man. You had to be excited. Uh, The St. John's game and the St. Francis game, countless stops at the right time, in and out of halves, right after halftime. That defense, man, they showed up to play. Yeah. uh, uh, By the way, I got a a number of texts from my former players. uh, Really liked your uh, new nickname that you dubbed (laughs) me. So I will not be living that one down for a long time. So... uh, but, uh, yeah, Coach uh, Coach Gorgoni did a great job, as always, with the defense. And, uh, 
you know, the kids bought in and, uh, you know, it took us a while. We had to move guys around and, and shuffle things around. And we had a lot of injuries, uh, on top of that, we were thin. So, you know, we were moving kids around and, you know, they can't, uh, uh claim that they didn't get a lot of reps in practice because, you know, everybody was getting reps and, uh, and at times it wasn't pretty, but in, in the end of the day, you know, they got better. All of them got better, but, uh, yeah, we knew we had a challenge there on defense, and had we had a fall season in twenty twenty, you know, we would have we were bringing back a lot of the weapons on offense, and then we get to the spring, and not all those guys are there anymore. So um, uh, that that then we all of a sudden we had a young defense and a young offense. So uh, you know, but we we got through it. You know, coach, you had some some ups and downs. It almost seemed like the same ups and downs you had during a regular season, only it was all condensed into a five week, six week you know, span, uh, focusing on one of the, the top things on, in my mind in your shortened season was here was Neo Avery who had a, a, sort of a breakout game. Um, you guys decided to throw the ball a little bit, give him a little bit more room, give him more experience throwing the ball. He really handled it well, ran the ball extremely well, and then we were excited to see what he was going to be able to do against a St. Francis Academy the next week only for him to be out. And then we're looking at this – Beanpole, Frank, Frankie Weaver, we're thinking <laughs> this is not what you want your first start to be for a freshman, but he comes out and he lights it up. I mean, that kid's confidence was, was uh, uh, you could see it from the get-go. How great was it to, as a coach to be able to coach those two games in the final part of the season with those two bright spots just, you know, really kind of stepping up when it was their turn? Uh, honestly, that made the season for me and really I think for – a most of the coaches and the team uh, because, you know, as a coach, you just love to see it when a kid is able to step up and take advantage of an opportunity. And, um, you know, both those kids worked really hard. Uh, you know, Frankie is one of the funny things because of the way the season was in the fall, when we were just getting really seven on seven reps, we kept him up because we couldn't practice with everybody. We didn't have really have a separate JV. We had a little bit, some JV guys out there, so we pulled up a few of the freshmen to pr help us practice because we needed another arm to throw, basically. And we very quickly realized that he had the ability to certainly throw uh, at the varsity level in practice. And uh, the kid's very smart and uh, learned. And so then, you know, again, we carried him over into the spring with us. Initially, st was he was the third quarterback. And then, uh, you know, one of our guys left. So we had Neo and, and Frankie and – you know, we were just repping him a lot in practice because he was number two and had to get him ready. And then all of a sudden we really needed him on a Friday night. Yeah. So it's you're up. And, uh, yeah, he's like that in practice, though. He's a confident kid. Uh, he makes great reads. He's smart. Um, so, you know, we, we thought he would be okay. But, you know, honestly, didn't know that he would perform as well as he did uh, under that kind of pressure, you know, certainly. Well, Coach, you talked about – doing it for seniors, getting it done for seniors. Um, man, I, there's so, so many guys that we could talk about, um, but we just showed an, a replay of that run uh, by Sean Aaron. And he, he, we, 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 we said it all spring, you know, getting a chance whenever we had good counsel on our air. Um, what a uh, joy it's been to watch him carry the ball. I know these guys uh, speak a little bit more eloquently, you know, in terms of, of you know, football. Uh, but he, he, so he does it the right way. Um, he, he looks like a football player. He plays best uh, after contact. He doesn't, he, he doesn't go to the ground. Everything he does is designed to get upfield, stay on his feet, and move forward. I, I love watching him, and I just love the opportunity he got against St. Francis. Um, I mean, we could start with Sean, uh, you know, getting this opportunity uh, but when I when you talk about getting it done for the seniors he came right to my mind uh, just because of, of of what he did right in front of our eyes yeah he's he's a great great kid great football player uh, you know and, it, and really it, uh, what you see is what you get he doesn't say too much he comes to practice uh, he's always ready to practice he always he runs the same way in practice obviously we're not going live and tackling but he's running it to the end zone every every rep uh, you know, we, we tease and we call him Coach Aaron because he knows his assignment and everybody else's. And when we when I screw up a call, which I do quite frequently, uh, <laughs> he corrects me. And uh, yeah, I just glare at him and say, yeah, uh, you're right. Get, get out of here, kid. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, he's just a great football player. We're going to miss him a lot. And, uh, you know, he would have been obviously our, our workhorse uh, with, with Leger Hatcher, who's also a dynamic back. We, we were, you know, when we used him, we leaned on them offensively, especially early on. And, and actually, when we realized we were going to throw the ball more, we, we tried to incorporate the backs more into the pass game uh, to try to keep get them involved. But uh, we were actually having some problems, uh, certainly with pass protection, with a young offensive line. And part of why we changed our sets and went to different formations was really, hey, some of our best blockers are our running backs. So let's get them involved with the pat and let, we need them to help us block. So we kind of adjusted our, our sets a little bit to get them involved. And, and, you know, they didn't complain one time. They were just as happy to stay in there and block on pass plays and stone people as they came through uh, on blitzes and whatnot. And that just tells you the kind of selfless uh, player Sean and Leger are. Yep. It was a pleasure to coach guys like that. Coach, I love watching them. I love the way they run. That backfield that you had at one point in shotgun with Neo catching the snap and, 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 and Sean and LeJay back there, that's about as tough as it gets uh, in any backfield in the nation. And I think Sean Aaron goes to Frostburg, becomes a star, and carries the workload there just like he did at Good Council. And uh, they're super lucky to get him. But – I think he'll have tremendous success early as a freshman, just like a lot of the guys that you had this spring. I'm looking out there at a kid like Kyle Altooner going up against St. Francis, starting at left tackle. You got Elijah Moore catching balls from Frankie Weaver uh, at, at crunch time during the game, and I'm looking around thinking, w what a class. I mean, this is what a class is supposed to be yeah. when you take down a WCAC title, but it was awesome for us to get a sneak peek that we might not have had had we not done anything this spring. Can you tell me a little bit about the future? Because that's what we all left that stadium thinking about uh, after last weekend. Yeah, we're very, very excited about uh, really all of our guys coming back. But certainly the freshmen and sophomores, uh, those classes are, are good, really strong for us. That freshman class is uh, going to be really good. And, and, you know, I guess that's one of the parts that's a silver lining in all this is that they got a lot more – varsity coaching and reps uh and the other thing i think that people don't you know realize is just typically with teenage boys you know there's a lot of growth physical growth that occurs from august of their ninth grade year to the spring we always see it when they come you know later in the spring we start workouts again and, and maybe doing some seven on seven it's like man they've grown two or three inches sometimes and they put on 15 20 pounds and they had that and now here we are in spring football so we we got the bigger stronger version uh, then we had, uh, you know, of the same kid in the fall, and uh, it made a difference. They were physically a little bit more prepared. Plus, they'd been in our weight program all that time. Even, although it was different with COVID, we were still training them as much as we could. Um, and that really helped. But Aaron Childs uh, is another one. Uh, you know, we just have uh, – like, he got a lot of reps. Judah Jenkins, uh, uh, du Dylan Jones. Or there's a lot of them that were on the field the other night. Uh, special teams and just getting a lot of reps uh, that uh, the future is looking pretty good. We're very excited. Uh, we have another real good one too, DJ Briscoe, who's out with an injury, didn't get to play this spring, but he's going to be a, a presence too when we get back in the fall. I hate just just calling out individual players because there's so many, and we and we did get a chance to see so say so many of their names. Um, Shane Carroll stood out from the first play. Really, he got that that big play against Riken and Leonardtown to kick things off this spring. Um, but I want to ask you, because we, 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 I think a, a smile came to our face every time number 11 lined up on the field, uh, Joe Camello. I didn't see it coming, and you know, because I'm, I'm a big, dumb idiot, and I don't know anything about anything. But all he did was make plays. If he wasn't making a special teams tackle, he was making a, uh, a third down catch. Um, Joey he, ball game. I mean, he was fun to watch. And again, uh, this is not to take away from uh, so many other kids um, who did such a great job, but wh where did he come from? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, well, Shane Carroll and, and Joe are very similar and yeah. they have a really high football IQ. Okay. And uh, you know, that's something that's, it's hard to, to coach. You can't really coach that. And uh, I tease kids. I tease these guys all the time. Like you guys didn't play in the in the, in the streets like we did. You, know, you you guys just don't know how to get open. You don't understand. Like you, know, why do we have to tell you? Just figure it out sometimes. You know, and they look at you like I guess if it's not old Madden, they don't know how to do it. But, uh, <laughs> but these kids do. And it, and and but Joe actually came in. I think more of, as a lacrosse player, and uh, he was actually playing JV as a sophomore. 
And you, know, I would get down to watch as much of the JV games, the home games as I could. And uh, uh, in 2019, and I kept seeing this little kid out there running around. And he was playing offense, defense, and just making plays all over the field. Now, I mean, that kid's a football player. And who is that guy? Yeah, you know? he and, is. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then he came to us. I don't, he still doesn't really know how good he can be. I tease him all the time. But, uh, you know, early on in the, in the fall, I went over and I said, you realize you could play for us. You could, I don't think he had even thought, he thought he was just trying to make wow. the team. Like, no, you're going to be on the field. Keep doing what you're doing. And so he's been a pleasant surprise. You know, what you see is what you get. Hard worker, uh, just gets after it. And, you know, just nothing, there's no task that's too small for him. He'll run down on special teams. And, you know, we, we, we love guys and we put a huge emphasis on special teams uh, at our place. So, uh, yeah, it's been great to see him develop. No task, you just said. I was calling him Tasker all yeah, night. I love he, it, man. The yeah. kid is a star. I mean, so he had two huge special teams tackles for that we saw. He took down Jamar Curtis um, when I know you weren't trying to give him a chance to return balls. Uh, and then he had a great um, uh, tackle, uh, open field tackle in, uh, against the punt returners for St. Francis. Um, and when you play St. John's and St. Francis, whoever they line up to field punts, you know if they get the ball in their hands, they're going to be dangerous. And Joe eliminated that twice. It was impressive. It really was. Did a great job with it. And he reps like that in, you know, in practice. There he is. And that's one of the things that's hard. Uh, sometimes you tell the kids, like, these practice reps matter on special teams. We dedicate a lot of time to special teams in our practices. And it paid off for him. He took it serious. And, you know, he, 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 we reaped the benefits of his hard work there. You know, Coach, I'm curious to ask you because you've been through such a strange time with the COVID and, and being off for 15 months, having this spring season and just finishing that up. I don't think a lot of people understand the day in the life of a high school football coach. It's not just coaching football. Yes, you're going to have to get your your off-season you know, program in place, but a lot of people don't know how hard you have to work right now to help young men want to achieve their their goal of maybe playing at the next level talk just a little bit about what you have to go through in terms of I mean I, I covered Maryland football for 22 years so I pay attention to a lot of the recruiting just how difficult it is right now with the COVID situation all the things that are going on whether you're going to have players be able to go to camps in person or not how the the junior class the juniors right now who are rising seniors they really got robbed of a, of a year essentially of getting film and and getting that full recruitment, it's just the, you, you got to be dealing with a lot of things, not just football in, in this crazy world we're in right now. No question, Tim. And, and, you know, one of the things it struck me this week, you know, in normal times, if we, had, we wouldn't be playing in spring anyway, but in normal times when we were at school yesterday for that Monday, that would have been the first day of the open recruiting period. And, you know, at our place, uh, you know, we would have had 10, 12 college coaches. They were, you know, yesterday and today and the next day and that goes through may 30th or thereabouts every spring six week open period and so you know that there's nothing like that in-person contact meeting with where we myself kevin mcfadden who helps me with that at, at school um where we're talking to the coaches you know and maybe they get to see a kid in the hallway and and get their eyes on them and maybe come out and watch us lift or or throw the ball around a little bit there's nothing you can't replicate that. And, you know, of course, last spring we had nothing. Mm -hmm. This spring, well, at least we have a little bit of tape to show them. Um, but, you know, they've extended the dead period again. So uh, it's really hard. Uh, the good news for our kids is that, you know, the last couple games, I think, caught a few people's eyes. And uh, certainly the game Friday, I think, surprised a few folks. So uh, got a lot of phone calls uh, from college coaches since Friday. And, um, you know, we're going to do the best we can to promote our kids and, and get them exposure. Uh, we're hoping they can go to camps. We're hoping we can do some seven-on-seven seven camps this summer. I think we are. But uh, uh, it's different time, and we're slowly, slowly kind of getting back to normal. But, you know, there's a, there's a small window now for these yeah. rising seniors. Yeah, and there's also, there's also this supply and demand problem with everybody in college getting the free year to come back. There, you, know, you don't – get to as a college coach know what normal attrition you're going to get year in year out through regular times numbers are are, are scarce scholarships are scarce it's just it's really kind of a lot going on in the whole ecosystem because of what covid did no question and you know kind of want to pile onto that uh you know, 
you know, the portal has just exploded yes. and they've made that even easier Absolutely. and easier, uh, which is a whole nother factor in this that really hurts the high school kids. Cause yeah. now it's much easier for these kids in college to, you know, to move. Uh, now they're waiving the, the, you know, the, the rule of sitting out a year. And so it sounds, it's great for the kids in, in the system, but it's really a, 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 a disadvantage now for the, the high school kids. And the, a lot of the parents and kids are asking us have questions and it's hard to answer it because what, what the answer was a year or a year and a half, two years ago is different now. Right. It, the yeah. rules have changed. And we, nobody's told us what the rules are. <laughs> so we're all kind of yeah. guessing. Even when you talk to college coaches, they don't know. You know, a lot of them have said, hey, we're cutting back scholarships. We're cutting back because, you know, yeah, we have these extra these guys coming back. But they don't always know who's really coming back. They think a kid's coming back and then mm-hmm. they may not want all those guys to come back. So they might tell a few of them, hey, you're not coming back, even if you want to. So it's a really, really difficult time uh, and, and hard to give answers to the parents, and the players. Well, coach, yeah. as the yeah. uh, time uh, as our time tonight becomes scars, scars. becomes scars. <laughs> It's really scars? Did I say scars? Yeah, you said twice. You said twice. You said twice. <laughs> you said scars. We're trying to figure out what the hell you guys are talking I'm about like, over here. Are we, is, is see, we... see, coach coach knows what I'm hey. talking about. I, I just, don't worry, I just it's great to have an adult on the show him. tonight. Too, well, coach right coach was about too. to call you out. He said he, his, understa- his, uh, his ability to understand you is getting scarce. As, 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 as we don't. I know, I'm just saying. Tomato? I'm sorry. It's not tomato, tomato. <laughs> Uh, coach, before we let you go, two more guys I wanted to bring up, um, and they jump off the film. Uh, and it's there. It does even a big dummy like me um, can get it right. Um, number four was all over the field uh, on defense. Uh, Gary was just an amazing, super fun um, tackling machine to cover. Uh, I wanted to get you talking a little bit about him, and then you know, from like you said, and I, I wouldn't say the way it you said. Um, because you can be more critical. It, I, all I can say is from week one to week five, Neo looked like a different football player. And there were times in the St. John's game specifically where, um, you know, Kevin and I kind of turned and looked at each other and were like, uh, th- that's a guy. That's a quote <laughs> unquote he's no longer a guy. Pop. He's now a dog. He, um, he was, uh, what happened to him in five weeks is nuts, um, and I guarantee I, I, you don't have to even tell me that a lot of those calls you got uh, since Friday had to do with um, in the last couple of weeks had to do with number five, six, you know, a, a guy with that ability and, and size. So number four, number five, both of those guys were were, were fun, and, and both of those guys just jump off off the screen. Um, get us out with a little talk of those two. Yeah, they're they're incredible. Uh, but, you know, funny they they're cousins, so. Uh, they live wow. with each other and, uh, and, uh, Gary is, uh, you know, we knew we had something. He came in, uh, uh, in 19 made varsity as a sophomore and, and just, uh, just impressed that both running back and linebacker. Um, and just, you know, he's a workhorse. He's, he studies hard. He never misses. And he's just, you know, he, he's one of those guys. He would be so much further ahead in his recruiting because he's just, he just goes, he triggers, like a true linebacker, it's all instinct, and he can run like a running back, cover ground, cover uh, receivers out of the backfield. He's he's going to lead our defense in in, in the fall and uh, have a great senior season. And you know he led us in tackles in this shortened spring season, and just can't say enough about him. He he's, he's like that in practice. We have to harness him back a little bit. Coach Sal's behind him, you know, grabbing hold of that short hey, easy big boy, because he wants to go all the time. <laughs> um, Neo was, was the best kept secret in town. Uh, yep. He came in as a freshman, bro, had a broken leg uh, the first day, not in, not playing football. He did it playing basketball and uh, missed his whole freshman year. So just watched JV practice, uh, but then made our varsity basketball team and actually started uh, most of the season as a freshman, which isn't easy in the WCAC. And mm. um, we knew we had a great athlete and we were getting him ready to compete. We thought we were until COVID hit, you know, and so then what would have been his year to compete. We had a senior coming back, but he was going to compete for the starting job in the fall. Um, and so we had all this time, but we couldn't really work with him on the field until we got him out there a little bit in the fall and then in this spring season. So what you saw is what happened. He was progressing. Literally, I'd say we saw a change, an improvement 
every day or two, <laughs> literally before our eyes. He was just under- getting a better grasp of the offense. Um, and then, as you know, as Tim, and Tim certainly knows this from his playing days, is once it starts to slow down a little bit at quarterback, all of a sudden the reads become a little bit easier and you start playing, you know, instead of just well, we were through so much at him. Uh, and he's an instinctive kid, a natural athlete. And we, I can't tell you how excited we are about him. Just, and he could play uh, quarterback. He could play tight end. He could play wide receiver, defensive end. We could put him almost anywhere. Yeah, uh, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking quarterback's just fine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like him there, too. I bet. Who doesn't? I mean, listen, Coach, I know you just – you gave T a little compliment. Apparently, I'm not picking up those reads quick enough, Ken. <laughs> you call someone air raid once, then you get benched at your own company. But that's fine. He won a championship. Coach knows what he's doing. I can play a little free safety if I yeah. got to. And also center. He's a great center. I was T center okay. at one point. He's a good center. A good center. <laughs> According to T, you, you, he you okay. were responsible for every missed Center quarterback transfer, obviously. You know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, we've kept you longer than we, uh, we, we, we uh, asked for, and uh, I know that um, this, you're, it's like there's two people right now who are there's the the tax guys after April 15th, and there's the WCAC coaches who are who are super happy for things to be over right now. You got some well deserved rest coming your way. Um, you know, get healthy uh, up and down that roster. Uh, please let everyone know that you come in contact with how thankful we are and appreciative we are to be to have been your guests uh, on your campus. Oh, yeah. It was a- awesome. We loved meeting everybody. We loved, um, you know, being around uh, your program and uh, all those parents and um, my uh, just just my thoughts and our thoughts. Is, we were blown away, man. It's first class. Um, and uh, it was an absolute pleasure, and it always is uh, talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Absolutely. Hey, I can tell you this, in a time when nothing's normal, having you guys there uh, you know, and, and broadcasting the game brought back what, the way things are supposed to be with you guys covering the WCAC. And I know our parents appreciate it. You guys do a great job. And uh, hopefully uh, we're back to normal here soon, and uh, I'm back in the basement with you guys. Yes. Yeah, yes. Man. No doubt. All right. Well, hey, I got to get Rick. I, I'm coming after you, Rick. <laughs> that was a compliment of all compliments. I love it. Was. it. it was. Hey, <laughs> you can still ground and pound and throw that thing all over the place. But, hey, it slipped out. Hey, I that... caught myself the second time. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not getting permission to move forward with this. But that's fair. That's fair. Hey, my uh, kids love it, so I got to go with it. Man. Just, <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, well, it's an ultimate compliment, and we appreciate you, Coach. Hey, thank you. Thanks Thanks so much, man. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon, Coach. All right, guys. Take care. (laughs) All right. You awesome. should get some residuals for the uh, the, the future quarterback uh, recruiting he can do as, hey, a, as the air raid Andy in the in Listen, the, the last thing he needs is my help right now. <laughs> I promise. Well, all right. So, guys, we're running a little bit. We're running a little bit long. We took so we we, we uh, took some extra time from Coach Stefanelli. We do have um, an entry in the WCAC in the community for Megan O'Keefe, and we do want to get to that. So um, uh, uh, if we could do a once through here somewhat quickly, I wanted I, I, we did kind of queue up a little bit of, uh, of wrap up. We're going to come back here um, in the coming weeks and um, really put a bow on this uh, f- spring football season. We have an awesome gallery of pictures from Matt Seal. We have plenty of highlights uh, from games we covered, not just uh, on the fields where First Amendment Sports uh, did the call, but also over at the St. James. Yeah. Got to talk about that Gonzaga program and their 5-0. and We will absolutely do that. Um, we're going to get to all of it. Um, but I did want to ask these guys, just, just quickly going through, um, you know, a player that stood out, a, a, you know, a moment that stood out. And uh, we'll go ahead. Kevin, why don't you lead us off? I have one guy, but it was during the we watched Neo Avery have his coming out party and Jamar Curtis do what Jamar Curtis has been doing. My favorite play of the entire spring was the first St. John's run, Jamar Curtis, the first St. John's touchdown run. Jamar Curtis follows Bryce Butler on a, a, up the – it was like a H-back lead. He sets the block up. Gary Bryant takes a down step, setting up the block for the H-back. The move Jamar Curtis put on the safety before he took it to the house from 75 yards out was definitely fall. This is the most exciting player in the WCAC, in my opinion, and I've watched him do it for three years. And watching that, it it meant football was back again for me. A house call from Jamar Curtis with a shimmy shake like that in open field, seeing that speed, I I knew exactly what I've been missing all fall. See? 
in terms of a player, I got to say KJ Winston from Tamatha. I think he <laughs> is shown that he's one of the next guys to kind of fill that role. Star. With Demarco Helms, who kind of takes over, and um, you know, it's I think it's appropriate. Kevin just talked about Jamar Curtis, who I think was the MVP of the uh, of the spring, just you know, in terms yeah. of his ability for explosive plays. What was it? Over ten play ten players or more that that were over forty yards. Yeah. But KJ was one of the only guys I thought with the speed to get to that edge before Jamar could turn it, you know, and and, and showed his elite speed and his elite ability. I'm looking forward to seeing him, you know, also just continue to mature with another year. I w- well, I did love that fourth down stand in the in the first half of that St. John's McNamara game uh, before St. John's took it to the to, to my Mustangs. I'm going to um, I'm going to give it to Neo. Uh, the the play that I'm talking about happened, I believe it was against St. John's. Um, he, he looked mean. He tucked the ball and he came around the side. And you're talking about uh, a field that has uh, Ojwebe, right? Did I get that right? Ojebwe. Ojebwe. Come on, baby. Come, Come on. on. Just go with D-O. Ojebwe. Ojebwe. Arturo Maddox. Rohan Davy. Um, you're talking about some. Very, very good defensive linemen and linebackers. Wrong D to seek. And he uh, lowered his shoulder. And that I think that was one of the times, T, when Kevin and I were, were like, wait, wait, what? This, that, that, that's, that's a yeah. whole different that was a big situation. Boy move. It was a big boy move. It was a, I thought it was an announcement uh, play for Neo. He did plenty of other things well um, in, in, that quarterbacks need to do. But on that play... He showed the defense that if he wants to get some yards, um, he's going to go get them. My heart almost beat out of my chest. I had the goosebumps, and I yelled yes. into the microphone. <laughs> yes. He was seeking out contact at 6'6", 240. Oh, it was special. It, he is going to be a problem. Uh, T, you get, to, you get to be the first um, to give us, uh, give us your story. So, I, really, it, I'm just going to keep it quick and simple. It was kind of cool to be able to call a game uh, with my nephew, on the field, yeah. having a little chip block that that sprung Sean Aaron mm-hmm. for a big play and in, in, in a big game, a winning touchdown. Um, it went, I don't think it went for a touchdown, but it was a big play. And uh, I also love the fact that a few plays later he jumped offside, so I could still be an uncle <laughs> and rib him a little bit during uh, during you know get together. So uh, just a, a cool moment, you know, yep. be able to call awesome. a game with a with, with a family member. That well, that was fun, and then yeah. getting the chance to to uh, mix it up with Brett. That's right. Uh, after some of these games, Kev? Well, um, co- Mr. Andy, S- M- Coach Stefanelli. Air I Raid thought, Andy. You no, know, take it easy. All right, Air Raid Andy, he's off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was so cool to see good counsel spread the field. Yeah. Uh, 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 just uh, not, Listen, they've been ground and pound. Let's be fair. That's what they've been. We know that. That was their brand. They're rebranding and yes, only right now. And with that receiving core and those young linemen coming forward and the athletes they have with multiple six foot six rifle armed quarterbacks. Yep. I think the rebrand is uh has been established. And, yeah. and and I know Andy wanted it to be a secret, but Neo's no longer a secret. Nope. So that ARA is no longer a secret either. Luke's working on – we'll have a, a sound effect for, for that in the future. It's going to be exciting. Um, so, for me, I think the the story, um, aside from just, you know, getting to watch firsthand um, what could Council look like on first and ten when they first took the field on that cold night in uh, Leonardtown and what they looked like against St. Francis um, – that what you, you you didn't need to know a whole lot if you, to to know that those were two different teams. Uh, I I'm gonna say the story is um, the WCAC is the best high school conference in the land, hands down, no argument. And when we show up in the fall to cover this conference, it's gonna be even better than it was and, and it always is. Not because the kids are different, not because the coaches are different, but because no. You took the best conference in the entire country and you gave them a five-week season where they got to bang up against each other ahead of a fall season. Um, Just watching the development of those players, watching the ability for coaches to lean on freshmen and and sophomores, really, the fact that they're going to now come back in the summer and and get ready for fall season, it's going to be like nothing we've ever seen. And I I think there's some talk and some possibility of there being uh, some sort of spring – Football, oh. high school football, period. 
going forward. Uh, uh, it, it'd be, I'll be interested. I'll be there. I'm, I'm sold. If they, I if was it, wrong once, I'm not going to be wrong again. <laughs> yeah, if, if they do it, we're coming. Don't you know, get me maybe, wrong. Maybe maybe a few weeks with a uh, scrimmage or something. But sure. Just you know, getting a little bit of action in. in and, and you know what, T? This whole recruiting uh, thing won't be normal again for at least two yeah. and a half more cycles. Yeah. So if, we, if that's a way we can help some seniors out, we're all in. Um, so that we're gonna we're gonna come back and do some more retrospective stuff uh, on what we saw um, in the in the coming weeks. But I do want to at this point in time bring in our good friend Megan O'Keefe to give us a little something we call the WCAC in the community. Take it away, Megan. What's up, guys? Megan O'Keefe here, back with another episode of WCAC in the community, and I've got an awesome story out of Holy Cross. So. If we can recall a whole year ago when this pandemic started, so much was out of stock. Hand sanitizer, toilet paper, and face masks. No one knew where to get a mask. So Hannah Cameron, a junior from Holy Cross, took it upon herself to hand make her own masks and share them with the community. And while she admits she had no background in sewing, she got her inspiration from some pretty special people in her life. We visited my grandparents and then she taught me how to make masks. I didn't know how to sew. And then when we came back home, I got to it. There was a small, small learning curve, but other than that, they were relatively easy. And I figured, well, I have a lot of service hours I have to get done. And then two, this is a relatively easy way that I can help other people. And if I have the time and I have the resources, why not just do it? <laughs> So as Hannah mentioned, she did have to fulfill a minimum service hour requirement from her school, which was 20 hours. So I asked her after all of her mask making and delivery, how many hours of service she actually did. I think 220 and then <laughs> however many I made for my family. Hannah recognized this issue early on when mask supplies were so low and she knew how important it was for people to be protected during this pandemic. Well, I just know a lot of people didn't have access to masks and a lot of like the lower healthcare workers that like wouldn't necessarily deal with COVID patients. Mm -hmm. I assumed that maybe they wouldn't have like access to the masks that they were supposed to have. So like maybe this could help. Hannah has delivered over 100 masks to Catholic charities on top of all the masks she made for her family and friends and community. So while she did take a break to focus on school, she did say she'd be taking her mask making back up for Lent. For WCAC in the community, I'm Megan O'Keefe. Awesome job, Megan, covering the best and most amazing kids, uh, in, what we like to think, in, in the country. Kids from the WCAC dedicating their time and efforts uh, to supporting the community. And as you guys all know, as everyone watching knows, you guys are out there helping helping your community out. We're going to make sure and shine a light on what you're up to. Uh, Megan O'Keefe doing a great job. We appreciate you. We look forward to your next segment. Guys, we're going to ask everybody to do a couple of things. We want you to subscribe to First Amendment Sports. Hit that logo. It's free. It'll let you know when we're going live with shows like this. And come on back in about five or ten minutes when we give you Thank God It's Tuesday, the anchor show for the Washington football team. We, we uh, uh, I got a little draft to talk about, some uh, draft prep going on. D.C. sports are about to kick back up in earnest, as we like to do around draft season. Um, until next week, I'm Ken Marangolo. He's Kevin Ricca. Hey, great job, Hannah. It's awesome seeing someone from the neighborhood yeah. I live in looking out for the people that live in bordering streets and all over the state and all the kids that do this. And great job by Megan. But way to go, Hannah. And thank you, Coach Stefanelli, for everything. You've always been treated. You've always treated us great. He's Tim Strachan. Yeah, I know. I love watching and following these schools on, on social media. There's so much more than sports. There's so many people who, who contribute to the community who do a lot of, like, fundraising drives or whatever it may be. I love watching it. We're going to do as much as we can to, to put a spotlight on it. But please let us know if there's anything we can do to help you out, get the word out, things like that. We'd love to be able to do that because this is what we love to do is just be a part of the community. That's right. And it is an awesome community. One of the best in the entire nation, as we continue to say. We absolutely believe it. We'll be back covering the WCAC on the next episode of the WCAC Spectacular. Thanks again to Luke David and Sean Olette on our crew tonight. Thanks again to our guest, Andy Stefanelli, the pride of good counsel. Thank you, Megan. 
Thanks to everyone out there for giving us your time on a Tuesday night. Once again, I'm Ken Marangola. We'll see you soon.